Hello, Michael. Uh, I got your, e your email uh, about seeing all the functions of the Super Eco, especially the approach. Uh, I decided to improvise a, a, a video. My name is Carlos Leon. Uh, because I, I can't recall if I have exactly what you wanted. But anyways, this is the Super Eco. Uh, at the moment I have in battery mode. So you see this battery message here. You see no GPS message because I don't have a GPS antenna connected to the unit. The GPS antenna in this unit is used for a uh, synchronizing the magnetic compass or the the magnet the rows the compass rows it synchronizes it with the tracking okay the unit has a a magnetic a magnetic a magnetometer inside so it synchronizes with magnetic heading but you have to install the unit away from wires uh, it, it, it will actually do a a self-test, uh, not a self-test, a, syn a synchronization. When when the airplane is turning, it will take a, a account of all the metal structures that you have in the airplane. But if you have wires, wires vary in magnetism because when you turn lights on, magnetism changes. So it's it's better to install the unit away from from wires. But I mean, if if you desire to just track. Then it will synchronize, as I said, with the GPS antenna. Uh, it synchronizes with tracks. It's much easier to fly like that for the autopilot, so you don't have to worry about the wind or anything. Okay, so the instrument is completely, completely, completely standalone. Uh, it has the airs inside. Here is the altitude. It's actually pressure altitude. So if I put my finger here in the static, I press on here, you can see the altitude changing. Of course, the airspeed changes too because it's not connected. And uh, if I press on the left, now the airspeed changes. And this actually I can test if, if the unit has uh, has uh, static, uh, if it loses the static pressure by putting my finger on there. Anyways, uh, you wanted to see the, the functions. Uh, if you press the L key, this is where we trim the airplane mostly. Uh, roll trim to the right, to the left, pitch trim to the right. Oh, sorry, pitch trim up and down, and yo trim to the right or to the left. Envelope protection, if you want to, even if the autopilot is off, it, it, it will be active. So if you turn too much, like more than 45 degrees, the, the trim tab will bring the airplane suddenly towards the center. That's if you want that function working. That's what, you know, if you're flying around the pattern and you turn too much because you get distracted, the autopilot will kick you back. Uh, okay, if you press the R key here, now you see the menu. This is what you wanted to see. So the first one is off. The autopilot, you click on this one, the autopilot disengages, and now you're flying hand by hand. If you do level, click on here, the autopilot will actually bring the wings level first and then bring slowly bring the attitude indicator to the center. Uh, so you do this if you get disoriented, you, go, you just go to level and it will level your wings and, uh, and your attitude and then it will maintain that heading and that altitude that you were at. It will fly straight. Uh, so that's kind of uh, get you get you out of different situation and also to normally activate the autopilot. By the way, off and level 
can be used in the I'm, I'm gonna put I don't have a switch here but you have a push button on your yoke if you press the push button if you click on it it's like off you will turn the autopilot off if you leave it, leave, it, leave it pressed you leave it pressed for three seconds and then let it go the autopilot will level so if you find yourself in a inside a cloud or at night or whatever and you get disoriented you just press for three seconds the autopilot will activate itself and uh, and fly the airplane then we have track I've got it configured as track in mine uh, so this will keep a track with the GPS antenna again I'll show it to you again uh, then if, if you do GPS oops sorry R GPS GPS will follow the track or the flight plan in your external GPS. It could be a Garmin, GNS, or it cannot be an iPad GPS because iPad doesn't have a serial port output. It's gonna be a serial port NMEA GPS. Most IFIS and GPS do have a serial port NMEA output, so you can follow your flight plan. The nav, if you press nav, you won't see it here, but uh, you will have a CDI needle. I don't know if I can. I didn't configure this one for CDI. Uh, so let me do it really quickly. Do here. Not one a ring. And then. Service mode zero. I want a GPS D lock approach. Now you can see the needle, you see? And the, this needle will actually break in like a normal CDI needle when the GPS is working. Uh, it could be, if you have it connected to an Arink radio, you can use this with a VOR or a, uh, or a waypoint. If you activate VLOCK, that the needle will turn green. That means it's a it's an ILS or a VR. If it goes purple, like this, then the needle is purple and it's a, it's actually a, a RNAV approach or a GPS waypoint. Okay. Then you have a so that's NAV. If you have, if you want to intersect radials or whatever, uh, also to follow an ILS uh, a localizer, you can use nav. Uh, but if you want to follow the localizer and the glide slope instead of nav, you do approach. I think that was your real question on the email: how to to do the approach. So you press approach, and now well, I don't have it connected to anything, but. The GP, the uh, the Super Eco will follow the approach in glide slope and horizontal and vertical. Okay, depending if you have the uh, an Arink enabled radio or or, is it, or or just a, a radio with an ILS VR VHF. Uh, by the way, uh, approach. We're still. Uh, this is like kind of beta we're still doing beta testers uh, it's not working perfectly and we, we we're not recommending it for IFR yet uh, but it works it, it works it will follow the, your glide path and, and the localizer okay I jumped I jumped in but if you if you press uh, altitude the the autopilot will maintain altitude or it will follow this altitude that I have here at the top. So if I put 2,500 feet, 2,600 feet, or 2,600 feet, it will climb at this climb rate. 700 feet per minute to 2,600. Of course, I should set my barometric pressure here below. And use my other hand. You can see it better. Okay, I can set my pressure here. 
okay? And uh, if you don't want to do a climb with vertical speed, you can do climb with indicator airspeed. Okay, now it shows on the left. So we're, we're going to do a climb at uh, 90 knots, 95 knots. And it will climb out at 2,600 feet following 95 knots. Okay, well, I think that's about, uh, well, service mode, I didn't show it to you, service mode, you put a password here, and it goes to different uh, service modes for setting, etc. Maybe I should have called it setting mode. Okay, the unit uh, is battery operated, I can disconnect it here, you see, and it's still working, it works a couple of hours like this. At the back we have a DB15 connector, uh, a USB port for loading executive software or at the front here, or else also for charging. I can connect it here and charging the unit or connect at the front. Same thing, they're exactly the same connector to charge it. We have a nice red heading box uh, knob. Let me show you the, the basics because I went into the menus. I didn't show you the basics. Okay, basics. So when you're flying, uh, you just adjust your heading box. No need to click on it or anything. Just turn it and you turn your heading box. You see, and when you turn your heading box, the altitude and airspeed disappear so that you can get some uh, situational and awareness so like you want to fly 210 and just set the heading book to 210 the autopilot will actually turn and level at 210 okay if, if you go a little faster the the, the heading will move faster it has an accelerate so, so if you, you you can go f a long distance very quick and then if you want precision you just go slowly let's see on, on here you can see the actual heading that I want to go, 315. Okay, well that's about it. Please call me or write to me if you have any questions. Thank you Michael, bye bye.